Welcome back to Etten Games and Hobbies here in Houston, Texas. I'm Justin Strickland here with uh, Trey Dismuse. He's going to be filling in for Rob Brown this week. How are you doing, Trey? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to be commentating. I've always wanted to do this. I'm glad to have you on here. Uh, Welcome back to Etten Games and Hobbies here in Houston, Texas. I'm Justin Strickland here with uh, Trey Dismuse. So, uh, Trey here is one of the best players here in Houston. He's made several top four finishes at store championships. Uh, yes. In fact, got second place at one yesterday. Isn't that right? Yep, I got second. My second second place. Um, and what were you running? Oh, it's Pomaz. I've got, I've been running Pomaz since I went to nationals in May and somebody blew me out with Pomaz and I immediately dropped the gin uh, Akbar deck that I was playing with and went, I'm going to play this deck because it's unfair. <laughs> Yeah, it is uh, definitely very, very explosive. Um, how do you feel that the fast hands nerf uh, impacted it? Um, I'm gonna... So the the fast hands imper so with fast hands, I think the deck is extremely good even without fast hands. Fast hands made it um, just kind of put it over the top. If you got fast hand, or did put it over the top, it made the deck even more unfair. So it's pretty unfair without it. Definitely. But at least at this point, I don't think it's irresponsible to play something else. No, absolutely not. And yeah. I mean, it, before, it is, it's before illegal. It was, Pomaz was so much better than everything else. That if exactly. You, if you played anything other than Pomaz, like got good at anything other than Pomaz, you were just being obstinate because you didn't want to play the good deck. Exactly. All right, so right now we have our first match coming up uh, with uh, Grant and Von Kramp. Uh, we have Grant on the left. He is playing uh, E Balatique. Uh, FN2199 and Royal Guard, and then Vaughn is playing uh, Eora 9s. So, how do you think this match is going to go? You know, I know the. I know both of them. They're both pretty good players. Um, I think it kind of comes down to what Aura rolls. Like, if Aura just. If Aura can can stack a bunch of damage in there before he takes her out, and he, or even if he goes for 9s first, then or then Von Kramp has a, a really good shot or, of taking this one down. But this is in the uh, the Nines Bala Royal Guard deck is actually it's a newer deck, but it's really really good. It's it's put up a lot of finishes. It won a store championships here recently, although it was Night Sister instead of Royal Guard. But the idea of it is really good. So I think we actually have an infraction here. Nines should not be elite because uh, Aura Sing is 18 points and Nines, nines is, 13 is 13 for his elite. So let's we should get a judge out there to go ahead and get that pointed out. Yeah, I think it will be really important for uh, Vaughn to get uh, fast hands early on Aura Sing so that the Guardian, the Royal Guard on the on Grant's side isn't able to Guardian away that uh, potential extra damage that Vaughn can get with the discard from Aura Sing. What do you think? Do you think uh, fast hands is critical in this matchup? In this one? To keep uh, the Royal Guard from keeping Vaughn from boosting Aura's damage? Uh, it's certainly useful. Um, the, being able to get her damage in with, before you, before the Royal Guard can eat them away is really good. So Vaughn's starting out, he's playing, going ahead and playing a Holdout Blaster on 9s. I might have rolled or Sing first to uh, try to get the get a black damage side in case he rolls that plus 2 on the Holdout Blaster. What We're still not going to resolve that with 9s. Um, I'm a big, big believer in giving your opponent the opportunity to make mistakes, so if it's 6 and 1, half dozen another, maybe give... Uh, grant an opportunity to roll the royal guard and miss. Uh, not that I think he would necessarily do that, but if he if he somehow does, gets to a point where he rolls the royal guard, then Aura can roll her dice freely. So Vaughn does hit the one in six one damage, and he's deciding to go after Balatik. Do you do you think that's the right decision? No, you always kill nines. You always kill Literally nines. Literally every time you kill nines. Every time. Because you take all the di all of his dice off the board. He's oh he's going to be stacked. If you go after somebody else first, he's going to be. Nines is going to be completely stacked with weapons that he just keeps re-rolling over and over and over. And then you're just going to die, for the most part. Yeah, getting uh, two uses out of uh, a weapon is very, very impactful. So let's see. So he does the thing where he taps like 45 degree angles. I don't know. That, I always go, ah! <laughs> Tap him all the way. Yeah, so and stick. That, Gaffy. that's that's something that you can always ask your opponent to uh, uh, keep their board state a little cleaner. Um, don't be afraid to um, ask them to do that. It's perfectly within your right as a player. So I think Gaffy Stick is an interesting 
weapon to play in a, in a nines deck with yellow in it because it has some really big upsides but on the initial roll out there there are not that many sides that can actually do something he happened to hit one there which is pretty awesome but for him well, I do like it in this uh, Royal Guard version because you have uh, the extra melee damage. Yeah, I um, think the Royal Guard... I actually like the Royal Guard version, I think, better than the Night Sister, at least from... Really? The, well, uh, Night Sister has some interesting synergies with making making you reroll dice, but I just I like the idea that it's all... You, you have that, that extra melee damage, because people... So, so Rocket Launcher coming in, out, in on nines for... Looks like three damage. Does he not have the resource to pay for it? Uh, oh, no, he, he must not. He does have an Imperial War Machine in hand, though, which I think we're going to see played here shortly. Imper that's a four damage. Somebody's about to get lit up for four damage. Oh, being sneaky. Playing defensively. Which is pretty good when you're playing the, de the more defensive deck. And Von writes the Holdout Blaster with a Fibro Knife. Man, he's hitting those uh, those one ups. Well, that's not one one up, but he's hitting those uh, die stick he can use pretty well. And those one yeah. damage sides add up quite a bit. Yep. That especially especially if, you're, if you're hitting them tw twice around. Pow! Take four. And he's going after Aura Singh, which Aura Singh. I definitely think is the right call because she does depends a lot on, of damage. It just depends on the the dice control. It's the in the nines Vader deck that I play that I've played against sometime. I like. I find it easier, usually the decks that I play can control one or two very powerful dice much better than they control all five, or in this case four, of nine's dice. So if I focus my dice mitigation on the one guy that has the powerful dice, and then kill the guy with all the die, I usually end up winning a lot more. Let's see. Looks like uh, Vaughn has claimed as he's out of actions. Or may, he may be passing just to bluff his opponent. We didn't have any dice out for that. Removal. He doesn't like me, and no resource. Well, he does have one resource if he wants to overwrite the Viper Knife. I guess he has one resource. Do we know which? His little red tokens, the red and white tokens, are the resources. Yes. Okay. This is like, when I play, I, I have very similar setup to what Vaughn has with his, his uh, resources, and then I keep them all on the mat. So I make sure, at the very beginning of the game, I point out to my opponent, I say, this is if you see resources here, they're, I have them to spend. If they're elsewhere on the mat, they're not... They're not in my, I guess, pool, or they're not there for me to use. So Grant is focusing into a resource. Picks up the resource. Oh, yeah, he got Interesting, four. Interesting, because he... Oh, I guess he needed the resource to resolve the rocket launcher. Yeah, somebody got blown up. Man, so nine damage already on Aura Singh. Aura Singh's that going down painful. quickly. I guess one way to not kill nines first is if you blow the other person off the table in round one, and then they don't have time to play a bunch of guns. And seven of that damage came from using a rocket launcher twice. That was a nice rocket launcher rolls. Yeah, I, I think Vaughn claimed a little prematurely. He, he probably should have waited so that he could override the Vibro Knife with the uh, Knucklers, and then use the ambush action to use the He Doesn't Like You. That's a excellent play idea. Let's see. So we're going... Stacking up nines. I don't know. I think at this... Well, he's got an ambush action. So hopefully... In, in, in this situation, I'd probably do the same thing. But now I'd roll out Aura. Because you want to get something out of Aura. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, you really need to get something out of her before she dies. But it's it's so easy with that's a good uh, nines that's across a, the oh, table. Oh! That's brutal. And Grant just taking the safe play. Going ahead and removing both of War's dice. Um, he could have overrode that rocket launcher or uh, played the fiber knife. It looks like on nines to try to get the the one damage he needed to finish her off, but choosing the safer play, which and he got he, to use he, his shields. He is exactly. There's he, a fiber knife on the table, so he used that to eat up his shields to take damage, so it didn't hurt nearly as badly. And he's already ahead in this game, so he he can pl he can take his time and play defensively if he wants to. He mm -hmm. doesn't need to be the aggressor. And he does need to get the ball of tick rolled out so that he can stand her up, stand him up whenever he kills her. Oh, that, that's why he didn't want to override yeah. the weapon on nines. There we go. Let's see, he's got a... That is one interesting thing about this Rainbow Nines deck, is that it doesn't really make great use out of ball of Teak's ability. Unless no. they decide to go for nines first and ball gets some redeploy weapons. Yeah. It's, um... There's a little bit of things working across purposes there. Because usually you want to put... You want everybody to have a bunch of guns on them. But especially with Balotic and with Nines, they 
they both want to be the target of all your guns. So I didn't see. But what, I mean, whether your upgrades are going on Balatique or they're going on nines, you know, you're you're using them twice. So yeah, you're not you're not unhappy with where they end up. Let's see. So Vaughn is discarding, or oh, he's he, putting his he, dice back. So he's. In, all right. Maybe maybe Grant maybe Grant had a ambush action they missed. Anyways, nines coming. Nines is coming in, and it looks like God that rocket launcher is doing some work, five, man. Five more damage on Grant's side of the table. Does Vaughn have anything to handle it? He has. He doesn't like you, so. I'd be so do you getting rid of that rocket launcher? Ask, this, that's a lot of damage to leave on the table, and and just kill Aura, who only needs one damage. Do you take the five damage and put it on nines, so that you're not wasting damage here, or do you uh, do you just kill Aura and get Bala to stand up? Um. Yeah, I think you. I think that I would put it on the nines, especially with that royal guard yet to roll in. You can get that one damage. Yeah, you can. Pretty easily. Put it on nine. Yeah. Get the five damage on it. All right. Let's see if we can see. Man, so Grant quickly. is taking a resource. I imagine we're going to see the Viber Knife come into play. Try to uh, take down or seeing with the one in three chance on that. Get R on the floor. So I'm curious why he didn't resolve the plus two when he resolved the rocket launcher. He didn't resolve it. Vaughn uh, removed it with he doesn't like you. Ah, I missed that part. That would be why there's no damage on anybody. Discard. So Grant does play the... Viber Knight down. <laughs> he went it? to resolve it, but I think he wants the one damage from it. So he, yeah, he's wisely discarding to reroll. And Vaughn doesn't have any more mitigation left in his hand, I believe. There we go. And he Solid gets roll. All right. R is dead. A damage on everything. Oh my goodness! Oh, he got a one shield. A shield on nines. Let's I see. I think Grant, we can safely say that Grant is pretty much in control of this game. It's going to take some crazy rolls on both sides of the table to, to finish this off. For, I mean, for Vaughn to come back, because Aura died in a hurry. Although I'm impressed that she lived this long in the second round, because he's already rolled, what, both? He rolled both ball of dice, he rolled nines out, he rolled the, the Vibro Knife and the Royal Guard, and it took a reroll to kill her off, so. So nine's coming back in, or Balatik coming back in with a uh, double shield. It looks like. Yep, I've got three shields there. So not that it's going to matter because everything, ev almost everything coming in is melee with a fiber knife. So I think that's why he's debating whether to to reroll here or to just take the shields. Yeah, I think you reroll. Um, I mean, you have the potential of doing five damage this turn. So uh, I don't see any resources on his side. So he's still still sitting at nothing. What's that last card? It's a flamethrower. Mm. And he's just passing. Just pass. He's far enough ahead that I don't think he needs to dig. Yeah, but I, d I don't know that that rocket launcher, or that flamethrower, you, like, you're going to draw into more weapons. Oh, you know? fair enough. Like, you, just you have, discard you it. You have plenty of weapons Yeah, if you look at him, deck, he's drawing. So. He's dr oh, he's got the... Uh, yeah, I think I would have just the, discarded it there. Discarded it. All right, fair enough. So, uh, a, hold up, blaster coming down on Vaughn's side. Doubt nines side. on the right side of the board. If he can get, yeah, it, something that 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 ball of stand up got nothing. Yeah, I've seen I've seen nines make comebacks like you wouldn't believe. Just right. rolling out maybe like a rocket launcher, four damage, right baton, two damage, then rolling in and, and getting you know five or six more. It's he can do some pretty good, he can do All some right. pretty obscene things at times. So let's see what Grant's gonna do here. Or I guess Vaughn. Oh, we had to hold the ambush action. So Vaughn decides to roll out his nines. And we got a two for one gun, a one gun, a resource, and a one discard. One discard that he does not have the resource to pay to up. Alright. So flamethrower coming down on Grant's side. And he does have the resource in case he rolls the four. Well, he didn't roll the four. That's typical. <laughs> <laughs> when I play nines, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always scared when I play the I played the Funkar nine stack for a while, and I ended up going down to just one um, flamethrower in the deck because I, I never had the resource. So I, if I rolled it out, it wouldn't do anything. Really, you never had the resources with Unkar? No, not when I rolled them out. I was too busy spending them. Well, you make all that money, you want to spend it. 
So the best defense coming down. I don't. Know. Uh, I don't know about that. I would have sat on that probably a little longer. I'd have got to see if I could have coaxed another card out of Vaughn's hand to get a reroll into something better. And but I guess at, at eight damage, he's. That is one of the strengths of the uh, the fun card deck is that you can uh, use that stormtrooper as a meat shield with the the best defense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now he, I mean, I mean here. At, at that moment, here I he has the not, he not has the royal the guard. It seems like he hasn't used guardian. Uh, he didn't use it very much. Yeah, he's only used it once, I believe. He's only and none of his guns have so, have redeploy, man. So Vaughn rerolled that one gun. I don't know what he was. I guess he was. He's going for the looking two, for a he two. Have, he doesn't have, but he didn't have the resource. Oh, he does have the resource. Right, so royal guard coming in two damage. Two damage. That's the strong side on the royal guard. And how? Oh, that's uh unpredictable. Unpredictable. It brings it down to a one. Still a solid reroll. Yeah, it the, could have been a lot that, worse. I played a uh, Vader guard for a little Vader while, guard. and oh, that was that was rough on Vaughn's side. He blew two mitigation cards and ended up still taking one damage. Yeah, that's one of the things I, I really don't like about Doubt is that sometimes it can just set you back, and uh, you know your opponent's up in action. Sometimes I, I still like Doubt because it's zero and it goes in any villain deck, but you you do have to pick your spots with it. Like you're. It's very difficult to get anything better out of a Vader die, uh, a baby Vader die. Like you're gonna give them, they've already got a three or something. You make them reroll. They're gonna get something good out of it. You want to take, usually want to doubt something that's got an amazing side, but it's not gonna be able to be resolved by itself. So Grant decides to downgrade the IQA to a holdout blaster. Um, I think he's afraid of nines dying. I think he wants something to redeploy. Yeah, that's a good call because he hasn't found his riot batons yet. And if he if he ditches the holdout blasters by playing them, he gets he's able to draw more cards in between turns and get closer to his riot batons. And Vaughn's nines is only at four damage. If he could have if he had one more weapon, he could have thrown down on nine. And solid roll. They're only ones, but that's a lot of damage. Well, the one the rocket launcher is not a one, but one uh, seven seven damage. Yeah, in that was seven game. damage. Man, that rocket launcher did some work. Yeah, man, I I think he got three three dam at least three damage out of it almost every single round. He got a, a four, a four, and a three. I mean, he got seven impressive. damage out of it one round. Uh huh. That first, that was like almost that was took Aura to one life left. So, what did you think of that match there? Ah, uh, it was it was interesting. I didn't, I didn't see a lot of super interesting decisions that had to be made. Um, Kind of came down to pretty reasonably evenly matched players. Both of them could have won it, but that rocket launcher just rolling four, three, four, kept just crushing defeat there. Yeah, and Some, sometimes the dice just roll all the four damages. Exactly, and Vaughn uh, it seemed like he never had enough removal. Well, he had it. He just he kept blowing it over and over, and it didn't do anything. Right. Reroll that die. Okay, I'll get something else good. All right. right. Doubt that exactly. die. And now it goes back to something else good. Yeah. So, the. Uh, the best defenses did some... Well, the first best defense did excellent work when it removed the two aura die. The second one... Maybe he just wanted dice off the table, just in case. I don't know. So, so I think we're going to try to get uh, Grant in here for uh, an interview and uh, talk to him a little bit about that game. So, we'll be right back. So, we got Grant in here. Uh, so, how do you think that match went? It seemed like you are in control for most of it yeah i mean it went about as well as i could ever ask it to uh nines is ridiculous yeah that uh best defense on uh aura's two twos were was pretty brutal especially when nine still had two shields on him yeah uh i just wanted to get him off the board because that's six you know i'd rather take three than six yeah exactly i mean aura sync can do some really insane stuff yeah. but uh yeah, getting seven damage out of that rocket launcher what was it turn one yeah that was insane that was gnarly <laughs> Uh, the guard is clutch because I mean, even when he rolls anything, you know, if I don't remove it, the guard is going to get rid of it for me. Exactly. Yeah, it, it seemed like you didn't guardian uh, a whole lot. Uh, it seemed like I guess you didn't have to, really. Not just that, but in the opportunities where I had to guardian or could have guardian, I wanted to do other things like best defense or unpredictable or uh, he doesn't like you. So. Yeah, better to use the mitigation you have in hand instead of uh, uh, taking more damage on the guard. Putting, yeah. him, putting him within kill range. Exactly. And then obviously I want him there for 
price of failure. So I don't want to have to end up getting him killed. Oh, so by you run price of failure in there? Oh yeah, man, oh, too. Man. I wish, I wish we would have seen that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was hoping to get two ball activations off in the same round, but it never happened. So Yeah, I, and your ball activation didn't do much for you at yeah, all. Yeah, that felt really bad. Yeah, uh, we were talking about it, and you held on to the flamethrower, and I was I was saying that I probably would have just thrown that away for a reroll because y you know you're going to draw into more weapons. Like, yeah. I don't know. I got greedy. What was, what was your thinking at the time? I just got greedy. Uh, that's you, thought all it you, was. you thought you were going to hit the four the next round? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. I just really got greedy. Uh, some, and I've been in that situation where you discard weapons, thinking you're going to get more, and you just never see them. So why? That feels terrible, discarding a weapon to not get any of the next draw. So I just wanted to keep it to hopefully get something. So we got a question from uh, mmumi 12 uh, Did Grant roll a Viber Knife? And when Aura went down, Quan snagged the die. Uh, we'll have to... We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. He might be trying to get revenge for his lost holdout blaster that he blames me for. <laughs> oh, he also wanted me to let you guys know he sucked. So. I really? don't know. Yeah, said yeah. He said, just tell him I sucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of felt bad for him because er, er, everything was just clicking on your side of the board. Yeah. Like, um, I, don't, I, I guess Aura just didn't put out enough damage. Now, uh... We missed it in here, but uh, who ended up winning the battlefield role? Uh, he did. And he chose to give you the shields. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting because Aura only has 10 health, and you want her to stick around for as long as possible. Jason's a good player. I just think that he overvalues getting the weapons back from, uh, what was it, Most Island? Or not Starship Island, Graveyard. Starship Graveyard, yeah. So he wanted his, his holdout blasters and fiber knives over the shields. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, Nines decks. Uh like the the only nines deck that I've played quite a bit is uh, nines with two night sisters, and it's really combo-y and okay. <laughs> uh, pretty crazy. But um, I mean, I've I've played against nines, but I've never I don't think I've ever played them on Starship Graveyard. I thought I thought that was an interesting include. I I know it helps you get your weapons back, but um, I mean, if if it, if you're getting back like rocket launchers, you know, you're probably sixes, you're, you're yeah. probably replacing the weapons on nines, but then you're having to pay the resource over and over and over for the damage. I don't know. Well, I think he wanted the ambush actions from the Vibro Knives and Holdout Blasters, so he could override a Vibro Knife with a Holdout Blaster, roll in Aura, and combo all that damage. So it's similar to uh, Ray action cheating over and over with the uh, Holdout right. Blaster. Right, it's just a less cheaty version of that, essentially. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're getting an extra damage out of that, but if you have enough weapons in your deck, I, I don't know. I don't think you need it. I think that, there's probably more impactful things that you can bring. Yeah, definitely, especially with how fast that one played. I was really surprised. I wasn't expecting an FN Aura deck to be that quick, but I felt like he was claiming while well, I still had, you know, four or five actions to do. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, the Rainbow Nines deck is definitely uh, one of the slower decks in the format, um, even slower than Unkar probably, be or Funkar, because it does have the Balance Ambition plays, the Price of Failure plays, the Bala reactivation. True. That's actually one card that I did not include in my build was Boundless Ambition. Really? Yeah. Did it? Was it just an oversight? Do uh, you think or? Uh... It wasn't an oversight. I uh, didn't feel I was going to need the rerolls with all the weapons and paying the one resource. I'd rather pay for an upgrade. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah, that makes um, sense. It's something that I probably need to test with because this is my first time piloting the deck. Um, I usually like to put my own little spins on them, so it's just one of those things that I didn't feel was uh, warranted. Yeah. So, uh, how do you see the uh, tournament format going into Empire at War? Do you think uh, do you think nines will stay stay relevant? And do you think uh, do you think do you think we'll find some new interesting pairings for some of the existing characters? Oh yeah. I mean, I think existing character wise, I really hope Chewie gets something. I said last week that he's probably my most underrated SOR card. Um, I think FN is going to stick around for a very long time because of his point reduction. I mean, he's got 13 points. That's insane. Like, his ability yeah. is ridiculous. 10 points for 11 health? Yeah. That's crazy. Please. Uh, Bala is another one that I see sticking around, even, just because his his ability is so good. Um, as far as other characters seeing better pairings... Um, I was telling you earlier that uh, I was putting together some some decks looking at looking at some of the empire war cards and i i think that vader with sienna ray could be pretty interesting 
because you get access to uh, leadership uh, and uh, some other good red cards like dug in and tactical mastery. Um, but yeah, being able and the best defense also being able to reset Vader multiple times in a round. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just a better version of Luke Akbar. Yeah, like it's one hundred percent a better version of Luke. I mean, Akbar. you don't you don't get the focus that the double focus that Akbar brings, but uh, Vader yeah. doesn't need it. Yeah, Vader's dice are so much better than Luke's that you just don't require the focus, and right. especially when you get things like uh, Force Strike. Exactly. So and lightsaber throw and all the know. good tools that villains get. Yeah, uh, Holocron Force Speed for a zero cost die that gives a focus. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know. What, is it, what are your opinions? What's a character you see getting a better pairing going forward? Um, I, I mean, character. besides besides that Vader Sienna one, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of the underrated characters are. Yeah, Chewie could definitely get better in the future. Um, I really want Padme to be good. Um, I mean, she's she's a classic character from the prequels, and I think that Mill could be really strong. I think it was strong when uh, before the ammo belt errata, yeah. but um, since then it's just not competitively viable. And I thought that at first that General Riken was going to be a good pairing, but then I read the fine text <laughs> under other General Riken that it's other characters that have shields. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully. hopefully uh, Mill gets a little boost. I think Leia even could see a better pairing than what she's gotten so far from Awakenings. Yeah. Uh, her dice are good. Yeah, her dice are really good. I mean, even Leia double rookie pilot could be pretty interesting. Single die Leia? No, is, double die. Is she 16 or 18? She's 16. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that would be nasty. Yeah, with Wingman and it's Trap, you know. Yeah, that's true. And uh, that's something interesting that... Um, it's a trap hasn't really been seeing much play in uh, our meta. Yeah, uh, and I, I and I think an it's a trap deck could be really explosive because there's a lot of nines decks, uh, Palpatine decks. Um, we we even had a sword championship yesterday where there was uh, two four character gun decks, I believe. Yeah, I think it's just due to the fact that Poe Maz plays so fast. And that's so heavy in the meta, and that the rest of the meta is revolved around Vibro Knight melee builds, you know, in uh, Daddy Vader, uh, SOR Vader, and things like that, and even FN, you know, I mean, most of the time he's not doing range damage. So there's not really a whole lot for you to resolve that it's a trap off of. Yeah, I, I could see that. Uh, but, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to see it come back. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hit for 14 damage in a round feels so bad. <laughs> That's what Force Illusion is for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so guys. Uh, thanks for coming in, Grant. Uh, we're going to uh, try to get our next match up for you guys, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. So we're back, uh, and we're back. we just wanted to talk a little bit about the TTS tournament, uh, the TTS Store Championship that went on yeah, yesterday. Yeah, the TTS Store Champs. And as interesting as the results are, I find it interesting that... FFG doesn't have any apparently didn't have any problem with uh, people playing on TTS. Like they gave away store champs prizes and you can play on TTS, and it's one of the biggest store champs so far. Had yeah, I don't know. Players. I don't know if they uh, they ordered their uh, like a store championship kit or um, I mean, it, store, it, they if, if they, if they were extra prizes that some of the they had um, the they people had the, running it had won. Everybody that, that entered got the uh, Matt the Radar Technician version of uh, the Kylo Ren card, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean Matt the Radar Technician. That's hilarious. But um, but it was it was a grind. It was eighty eight players and eight rounds of Swiss, and then after that they cut the top sixteen. So I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen uh, any tournaments really outside of Worlds that have had that level of. I don't even think we had eight rounds of Swiss in Worlds unless it was broken up across two days. Uh, it was broken up. Uh, we had we, six. We had you and six, I had on, six. We had six on day one. Yeah, so and, that was eight uh, rounds of assists, top sixteen. Yeah, but but then cool. they had they had a f several more rounds on day two, I believe. Right, they had, they had a bunch more Swiss, but right, you and I didn't experience that. No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we're bad at this game. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I hope we're better now. We would give a better showing now. Uh, but the uh, 
it was interesting. We've been looking at um, Grant's deck and uh, kind of people switch between the Night Sister and the Royal Guard, and the, the the deck that took that one down. No, that was the Vader deck that took that one down. But yeah, the, Vader Guard beat uh, the Rainbow Nines deck. Too. But be, but it was second. It got second. And there was there was four Rainbow Nines decks, I believe, that entered the tournament, and three of them were in the top sixteen. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Seventy five percent of them made it, and then. The next closest uh, percentage of decks that entered that, that made the cut was uh, Poe Maz at just over a third. So, I think are we ready to go? Yeah, we're going to start up uh, round two for you guys um, in just a second. All right, so we're back. We got uh, Todd Debod on the right and Grant again on the left. Uh, Todd is bringing us uh, Emo Kids. Emo Kids. I don't know that I've seen that alt art card before. Have you seen that one before? That particular. Uh, I have color? not. I, I don't know where that one's from. Huh. For the right. Kylo Ren. Um. Now just to, to to remind people, you can you can play with those usually, but you have to have the real version or an FFG real version in there with it in the in the sleeve with it. Otherwise, they generally don't care. Or, if, they, if you do that, they'll let you play with those alt art versions. Yeah, I guess one of the good things about this game is that um, you know you can't counterfeit the dice. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. That would that would be extremely difficult. As FFG knows, it's extremely difficult to manufacture those dice. So, all right. So we're looking at. Let's see. So Grant starting. is starting out with an enrage, uh, trying to ramp into his three cost weapons on nines right off the bat. And Todd gets his holocron. Typical start where you start tarting up Kylo Ren here. You want Kylo Ren's lots of dice versus Vader's big dice. Oh, yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah, you want you want a mind probe on Kylo by the time that Vader goes, or something equivalent by the time Vader goes down, so that he can carry the team. Although this isn't a terrible matchup for Kylo, since Grant will be sporting a lot of um, high cost cards in his hand. Yeah, Kylo. That's actually one of the things that got me in the store in the finals of Store Champs yesterday with Poe Maz is is he hit a Kylo special on his first roll and I had nothing but threes and fours in my hand and he ended up hitting me for three. Oh, that's brutal. So Grant right away going into uh, Riot Baton and gets a resource out of it. Pretty good, pretty good. Now he's up to having four resources in turn one, which is pretty awesome. So go ahead and guardianing the Guardian, three away. Get a shield. Guardian hit a shield. We're thinking here. Looks like he's going to force strike. It looks like uh, Grant forgot to put the damage on his Royal Guard. No, he did. It's right there. No, because he used the Guardian to... Oh, you're right. You're right. He probably forgot to do the, the damage. That was the Enrage damage right there. And that's a... I mean, that's that's a pretty big mistake. Um, we'll see if Todd realizes it. Or Grant... Um, but Nines rolling in, gets uh, two damage out of the Ribaton and uh, one gun from Nines. And Kylo coming right, responding with uh, Holocron Special and a Kylo Special. Ooh. Does, uh, did Ooh, does Todd have any Force Powers in hand, did you see? I didn't see any Force Powers, but he doesn't have, even if he does, I don't see any resources on his side of the board. Oh, no, so are those his, his little... No, he's already spent them all. He's like me again, he just moves him to the side. Yes, he does have a force power in hand. <laughs> or he did. Now he has a holocron in hand. You're so perceptive. <laughs> oh, see, there it is. Oh, Kylo There's special Kylo hitting, hitting the rocket launcher. Nine's nice. already half dead. That is insane. Oh, it was a three or a zero. That's the uh, uh, that's price the, of failure. That's the upside from uh, Kylo. Kylo there. is so swingy. He either is terrible or he's fantastic. Here it comes back down. Yeah, I'm surprised he doesn't get more play being uh, so low costed. But I mean, I guess nines being the same cost as Kylo, you know, you look at he's just much more consistent. Exactly. I mean, you can do a lot of damage with Kylo, but you can't guarantee that you're going to do a lot of damage with Kylo. But nines, you can just play good weapons, right? Just, like rocket launcher and yeah. riot baton, and you know you're going to get that uh, cheated extra damage in. All right, so he's trying to take down Vader. So I think now that he's committed to somebody. If Todd can come up, come up with a force illusion, it's going to go on Vader. Although he's not really that committed; it's only two damage. But 
Yeah, it would be rough to see a Force Illusion on Vader right now. Um, unless he's able to... Unless Grant's able to draw into a Vibro Knife. Um, that Greg he could maybe play on, Ooh. play on Balatik. Greg got a lot of mitigation, but one of them is going to hurt Nines even more. He's got the best defense in there. And that might be why he took the two shields last round, just to uh, be able to use that best defense. Huh. You don't see the command shuttle being used in this deck very often. That's an interesting deck, uh, card choice. No, it's. Uh, I think it's pretty good in this deck, though. It does have uh, two special sides and yeah, a two no, it's, it's and a two damage it's side. Good. It's a good. It's a good card if it gets going. It's just you don't see it very often. Man, he is just. Oh, there's a three there. So he's up to Vader's up to six. Yeah, I think one of the reasons you don't see it much is because the deck does run Emperor's Throne Room, and it really wants to claim for those uh, character ah. die specials. Um, mm -hmm. So it it, it just kind of slows the deck down a little bit when you have those supports out. So the version that won at the store champs yesterday here in Houston, the last one of the season, actually did not run Emperor's Throne Room. It ran Rebel War Room so that it could claim and resolve, I guess, Vader's 3 or Kylo's 2. Without or Force paint. Lightning. Uh, I never saw Force Lightning. Of course, he blew me out pretty quickly, but or I never saw the Force Lightnings. But yeah, that, that would be a similar thing to put there. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that that choice in the, the Kylo Vader, but I mean, I, I definitely see Rebel War Room used quite a bit with the uh, Vader 9's deck. So Grant is deciding who to roll in, and He's gonna he guard guardians away, away the, the two damage from the command shuttle. Did he forget to take the damage again? <laughs> wow. So I guess that's... He did one or two last time, and then two this time, so... I mean, I, 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 don't, think, I don't think Grant's had... Uh, much experience playing with guardian characters, so. Or Todd either, apparently. Yeah. Just keep going. This is one of the one of the things that is important about when you start when you play in this game and you're playing at high levels is make sure you're not so overly focused on your side of the table that you don't catch things like this. You need to be keep in mind what's going on, what exists on the other side of the table, what's happening, and whether your opponent's actively cheating, which I, I doubt Grant is, um, or they're just forgetful, you need to make sure that they're sticking to the rules, too. So, it looks like Grant's deciding if he wants to re-roll, or oh, remove Vader's dice. That's a... I don't see his resources. He doesn't have any. He spent them on the rocket launcher. So, Kylo is rolling in, and... I got another Kylo special. A two Let's damage see. on the force push, a shield, and a plus one resource. Grant on has a front. flank and a, a doubt and something else in hand. So Kylo's special is not going to be nearly as good this time. And double focus from Balatik. That's pretty good. Could, that could be it's huge. Strong. Uh, Todd only has a doubt in hand for mitigation. This looks like it's going to be a great spot for Grant to... So he's doubting the rocket death. launcher. That's a good call because he's not able to pay he for it. He can't pay for it. He can't pay for any of the sides, so it's just automatic removal. That was a really heads-up play. Very smart. And Grant using the double focus to go into a resource and a two damage. So he's looking at squeezing... Five damage, uh, five which damage uh, will out be of a dead, dead Vader. Yep, that's a dead Vader showing. So at this point, do you kill... Your royal guard with price of failure to stand uh, nines up again? Uh, oh. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> Maybe I should pay attention to the advice on the other side of the table. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, probably another heads up play, uh, and maybe anticipating that price of failure coming out, going ahead and killing the guard. Todd's doing great. So yeah, this, is, this is definitely some good play from Todd. Zero. And Kylo well, special nice. hits the price of failure. I wonder if he's uh, talking like, I knew that was coming out, maybe. And... All right, two resources left on, that, on Todd's side of the table. Or maybe he was just trying to save the two damage on the Royal Guard. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's a, yeah. that's reason enough to kill the Guard in instantly. Oh, more of them coming out there. So Vader is sitting at two health left. He just picked up... Why did he pick up Polychron? I don't... I'm not sure. Okay, so there's some... Some good thought processes going behind some of these plays, but it looks like a little bit of technical... Um, 
incorrectness. So Vader rolls in, blink, and a discard. Mm. Here we're getting ball. That always in. feels ball bad in. to see that that one discard side on Vader. We're getting Bala in so that if he can kill him with nines, he's going to stand up. Holocron comes back down on Kylo. Overriding the rocket so, launcher by Brunei. Ooh, downgrading. Kylo's looking uh, pretty good going into the, the mid to late game here. Uh, already got a force push on him, and uh, nines is close to dead. Blanks. I think I think Grant is going to need a little bit of help here from his nines rolls to finish off Vader before. Yeah, I, I think his rocket launcher took all of his mojo from the last last game, and I mean, no, none it, of his dice want to cooperate. Yeah, I mean his rocket launcher last game was hitting for three damage every single turn, at least. I guess he didn't want to resolve the resource. Interesting. Maybe he wants to use the focus. On uh, Bala to use it first. Okay. Let's see. I think. No, I, that, that's that's right. You, you focus. Use the focus. I think I would two. focus into. Uh, into this, or he just takes it now. That's yeah. a little bit of second guessing of his line of play there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what he was waiting on. So Kyle's special. He had a doubt, a feel your anger, and I don't remember a flank in his hand. I believe. Press a failure. Uh, so he gets hits the flank. That's the. F so another. That command gone. shuttle's looking really solid over there. Yeah. That's I just mean, another big powerful die that he has to, that is unkillable basically. I don't think it's a, a underrated card, but I think a lot of uh, Kylo Vader players overlook it. Just because it is a support and it, it is a little slower, and they supports just have a stigma of not being good. Oh, defensive position. Defensive, right. decisive blow. Decisive blow, yeah, that's the same thing. Remove all his die, resolve. Woo! I don't know that I've ever seen that played. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Grant's, Grant's shocked right now. Ooh, that was a blowout. I've never actually seen anybody <laughs> set, pull up three resources, play decisive blow. Wow. Have you you never played it in a deck? I never put it in a deck. It's three resources, man. Why would you play with three resources? The only time I play three resources <laughs> is yellow cards that I can play for two with Jen. Oh, God. All right. And I felt that one from over here. Still has the command shuttle to roll in. And I can't so, flank. So, he tried so to this... flank the command shuttle die. Couldn't do it because he didn't have any ready, any ready guys. Yeah. So that two damage earlier was from the force push, not the command shuttle. Okay. And this is one of those things that if you're on Grant's side of the table, you've got to, when you get hit with a gut punch like that, you've got to keep your wits about you because it's real easy to go on tilt when somebody pulls something really unexpected like that out. Real easy to lose your focus and then let that spiral into just losing the whole game. So Grant will get two Bala activations. I don't know if he's going to be able to get them this round. Well, hopefully he's going to get them. Bala's I mean, only got eight health, man. I mean, he's out of he's out of cards. It looks like and we're getting that. That's going to be kind of an unused focus. And those Vader dice are still on the table. So one damage coming in on Vader. One still, damage. still one short. Nope. It only works if you have a melee die showing. Let's so see. I, 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 would, I would pitch to reroll everything right now. Just trying to put he the, had a put the lightsaber gas throw and an isolation. Uh, I probably would have tossed the isolation um, just because Bala doesn't have great dice to get rid of, and he hits the focus for damage. I think Grant maybe. Oh yeah, oh, we all assumed Grant had already claimed. Taught, yeah, taught that Grant had claimed. So four damage going into Bala. It is not looking good for him right now. It is not looking good for Conja Club. <laughs> well, you know, he hasn't played a backup muscle yet. Oh, that's I don't true. even think it's in his deck, but you know, it's part of Conja Club. Exactly. Gotta have those no faces around. And this is one of those situations, he, he got a doubt in hand. This is one of those situations where you don't really want to roll, you don't really want to play doubt on somebody like Vader. If he had rolled, if he rolls out Vader, and then you try to doubt it, well, it's just going to probably take damage. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything that Grant can do here. 
I mean, so he, he's, he, he, he's he, got he, the he, damage. He to... will be able to finish off Vader. So what do you think here? Like, Vader's dead unless he can... Unless he has mitigation. It looks like he's got two isolations, but he can't isolate both die that can kill him. So do you force him to do it by well, rolling out Vader? He can't isolate... But he can't isolate the, 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 yeah, the gun only. either. Do you, you can't isolate either one of them. Uh, you're right. Do you I, force I, him to do it by rolling out Vader, or do you just assume Vader's going to die on the next next action? I'd, do probably, I'd probably just roll out Kylo, get as many dice in the pool as possible, and force Grant to respond to them. Okay. Um, because that might, uh, like, there there are situations where you can go. get into oh. where you have dice mitigation, but you need dice in the pool. So if you're able right. to roll in a character, oh. that and, was that was actually a pretty good choice there. Like Vader was gonna die; it would have eaten, it removed a die, but he did three damage and killed Vader with the command shuttle. Oh yeah, that's definitely a heads up. up play. Bala stands up. But I don't know because then. But then Grant doesn't have, doesn't have any wasted left. damage. Like, he's got... If he has any... Yeah, this might be over. I'm pretty sure this is it. Depending on what's in his hand, all he has to do is resolve Kylo's special, not hit a zero, and it's over. But like I was saying, sometimes you get into situations where you have uh, removal in hand, but you need dice in the pool. Mm -hmm. So if you can roll in a character and threaten uh, damage on them, mm -hmm. and they have to remove that before they resolve their dice. I'm pretty sure that's the end then of the game. You, no, then, he has a zero in hand. Then, okay. you ha then you have an option to remove their dice in, in turn. His ball of stands, or his ball of stands, so far, actually, both matches have not been great. He re-rolls the no, dice. No, and, and I, I think that just comes down to uh, playing against two character decks. That's uh, Bala's biggest weakness. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that you're rolling dice. Exactly. <laughs> You only have so many cards to pitch to get re-rolls, so if you have to work real hard to get useful dice that you get out of the pool to re-roll, now you have no cards left if you don't roll great the second time. Alright, so if you're Grant here, how do you deal, what, eight damage with that many dice still in the pool? <laughs> I don't know. You just hope that Todd completely whiffs. I mean, he has he has the, he already has the focus right, so he discarded on the Holocron, the... so... Just... He's got a, he's only got a zero left in hand, so Kylo's special. He, he successfully avoided Kylo's special. I think that was a mistake by Todd. I think Todd should have immediately gone for Kylo's special, because you only need one. And if you miss, you're so far ahead it doesn't matter. I wonder if Grant's just like hoping for shields here, and he got it. He got the shield because he kept the the shield on the vi you know, or the. And there's holdout. a one damage isolation. So he takes a shield from the holdout blaster, the and I wonder if we're gonna see a Kylo special here, which is gonna do nothing. But he does have a focus. Right. Let's see. But, what can, well, you can focus... Can you focus the... Yeah, you focus the force push into a two-gun and kill him. That's all you have to do. So he's keeping the... No, or you oh, just I mean, re-roll and roll yeah, the two-gun. Just roll it. That's all you got. Expect we'll see a handshake here momentarily. So Grant's nope. rolling in. Can't do anything about it. Maybe Todd hasn't played against Balatik. <laughs> no, I think that's his already rolled. He hadn't already rolled? The second time? No, he has not. Okay. Those dice were out there so long. Todd's not a newer player, so... No, he's been around. I can't, I can't imagine he doesn't But then again, if Balotique you're Todd, like, like, look at your dice, Todd. It's over. If Grant is just going to roll the dice, just you're just going to kill him with your two guns. Exactly. I, I don't know what the... Just, uh, even if it's wrong, just let him roll. Then resolve your two-gun and win. We'll see if they come to the realization that it's game over. On the other hand... Unless, unless, unless again, we're missing something. I played... I played Magic before this, and more than once I have pulled wins out of tournaments where I was dead on the table, just like Grant is here, by forcing my opponent to do it. Like even if you're dead on table, don't don't just scoop. Don't grab your stuff. Make, yeah, make it, them do it. Yeah, and people make mistakes all the yeah, time. Yeah, people people make mistakes. They're just people. See? All he has to do now is he just resolve two specials, hit zeros. That is a two gun, that's not the two discard. Yeah, that's a two gun. 
So Todd well, was apparently we're backing up. Todd was resolving specials and he, Grant only has one card in hand, so he and really only needed to resolve one. He resolved. He unresolved. There we go. So he does two, and that's that's <laughs> game. <laughs> I guess Todd didn't know that it was an. He had eight health. That's what he was looked like. Grant was showing him. All right. So Todd takes it down. Todd's two and zero. We got one more round after this. So we'll get Todd in the booth and uh, have a little chat about that game. Uh, we'll see you in just a couple minutes. So how'd you feel about that match? It seemed like uh, you were in control for the majority of it. Felt pretty good. I thought I got a lot, some good lucky rolls. Able to take out his FN fairly quick. Getting the Guardian out of the way was Yeah, key. and uh, he actually had the price of failure in his hand that round, too. Oh, did he? Which uh, I thought was going to come out. Oh, sweet. So I got lucky on that. Get, get rid of that Guardian so he couldn't manipulate my dice as easy. And that was a that was a pretty heads up play too when you use the command shuttle to fire off Vader special, which ended up killing him. Yeah. Um, to get an to, to get an extra three damage in, um, which was kind of risky because it did mean that Grant wasn't going to have any wasted damage on his side of the table. Yeah. That um, the five damage he was showing on the right baton and the holdout blaster was going to go all into. Well, Kylo. he only had one resource here. He could really only resolve one. Right. Exactly. So, so I figured three for three, give him. Yeah, and that ended up putting him down to uh, one health left, yeah. I believe. So confused me on the Balo a little bit because I hadn't really played against Balo too much. Uh, I thought his dice had to be on him as soon as somebody died. He re resolved right then. He re, re rolled or whatever. I didn't realize he could play out resolve his dice, his and, dice then, and then roll them back then out. Rolled, yeah, yeah. I never played against it like that. So but that's a good lesson to learn. <laughs> Happy I finally pulled through on it. So have you uh, played this Vader Kylo deck much before? Uh, just a few times for fun. Just a few times? Ne never in a tournament. Uh, yeah, uh, you are like you seem like one of those players that you kind of bounce around from deck to deck. You never really stick with anything for too long. Uh, to me, I, I'm all about having fun with it. I don't like the decks that just shut everything <laughs> down and make no fun. And, yeah. Uh, to me, Star Wars so we won't, be we about... Won't, we won't be seeing you play Poe Maz at all? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no discard decks. I hate those. <laughs> no mill decks. No. Okay. I mean, I think Crime Lord's one of the worst cards they ever made. It's too <laughs> <and> powerful. <laughs> too powerful. It costs like nine resources it's to still, kill somebody. Kill somebody like an emperor that has no damage on him and without doing anything. It's yeah. kind of boring. You win without doing anything to me. But it's not my style. Uh, it is some people's. But yeah, that did feel ba bad. Like a couple months ago, we were playing, and I had the Plutz Pilots deck, oh, and you were playing Palpatine, and I Crime Lord, and you were like turn two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just broken. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, the new combo I hate also is the uh, with the FN uh, Uncar, where they're getting rid of two salvage of your stand, salvage yeah. stand, and the other one that gets rid Inspection. of inspection. Yeah. Those should be limited, I feel. I mean, it shouldn't either. They should be yeah, they limited are, to one per deck or not together. They are combined. very powerful cards. Yeah, um, when you have for, four of, all four of them out, nobody, you can't do anything against it. Yeah, they're very, about, very, very powerful cards for uh, zero cost. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're going to see any any erratas or changes to them, but um, I mean, they're just, they're, I think there's something that they're going to impact the game for a while. Yeah. Um, so, how do you feel about the state of the game right now in Destiny? Do you feel like uh, there's uh, a good variety of uh, yeah, I think the next decks set's and uh, change it up a lot? Looks like it's leaning more towards ships, or you're gonna have to do stuff to get rid of the uh, supports because supports are gonna be big next game, I think. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna come back for round three in uh, just a few minutes. All right, stay with us, guys. So we're still waiting for them to get set up for round three. Let's talk a little bit about the store championship that went on yesterday. Yeah, so um, it was in the middle of town, and it had it started. So the the people that did it, they put they created two Facebook events, and one of the Facebook events was on their company page, and it said it started at one, <laughs> and they created one in our Houston Destiny group, and it said it started at two. So there was some miscommunication there. Uh, I think they both started too, and she changed hers and forgot to change the one in the Houston Destiny group. Oh, okay. And uh, so I showed up at like 1.40, and everybody was already playing. <laughs> I was very um, 
Not so much put out. I'm a pretty laid back guy. I don't get put out, but I was like, all right, so what are we going to do about this? So I guess I just ended up giving you the buy, right? Yeah, there was an even number of players. There were 14 players at that point. It was, uh, I think that, that makes it our smallest one. Oh, well, that's good that uh, uh, you made it an even number. No, I made that it is. an odd number. Oh, It was okay. 14 players before I got there. But because there were 14... And Man, then, I can't believe they let you join then. Huh? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but then they added me, and Brent put me in as uh, the buy, and, which is fine with me. Um, we go to the... We're, we're supposed to go to the next round. So with 15 players, the way it works out is it's four rounds of Swiss and no cut. So whoever is first place at the end of four rounds, just yeah, that's the winner of the store champs. Um, so we're, there was going to be no cut. Even with me there, it was 15 players. And then I want to say at like 152, two more guys showed up and put us up over the 16 number that we needed to have a cut. So we ended up four rounds and a top four. Um, ended up. Uh, playing, I, I got the buy in the first round. I had to go through some pretty tough competition the next three rounds. I played uh, the only other Poe Maz player there. I played him in the last round. The winner was going to end up in first place, and I won that one. I ended up first place after Swiss. So, so I'm only a little bit upset with the two guys that showed up and made it because I should have won. <laughs> if they don't show up, I win after Swiss. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm glad they shut up. But more people that play are the better. I've, I've done well enough in Store Champs that I'm happy to have more people playing. So you've been playing Poe Maz pretty much since the beginning of Spirit of Rebellion. Um, yes. How how did the errata affect your deck? Did uh, you just swap out a couple cards, or did you keep just the two hands, cards? Or? Like uh, just I swapped out the two cards, and then Rob, the guy who was in this chair last week, is the guy that was playing Poe Maz right there yesterday. He's a big fan of of still having fast hands. Yeah, he, then, likes, uh, he likes fast it on hands and, on Maz. And we, I can't talk about it too talk... much, because a lot of the time when I'm playing Poe Maz, one of Maz's dice just stays on the table. Yeah, we t time. he talked about it a little bit last week, how he, you can still, like let's say you roll out Poe and you get a, a blank and a, a two gun. If they don't have removal, you roll out Maz, use the fast hands on the focus to turn Poe to special, and then resolve both the Poe's dice, the ranged yeah, and it's, the Yeah, it's pretty good. Special. So the I, I had swapped that out. I've been using, and I haven't spent much time testing it. Once I won the store champs with it, I started doinking around with other decks. And so I played Funkar and got second, and I played... Um, Jin. Did you play Jin? I haven't Commando? played Jin. I started to play Jin, and then a buddy of mine showed up with a Bay's Ray deck that he had put Planetary Uprising in, and that's my favorite card. One of my favorite cards in the whole... In it's, all of Destiny right now. It's really powerful. And I... That's why it's my favorite card. I like to win. <laughs> Have you seen that deck that's floating around called the Wookiees? It's like... No. Poe, two hired guns, and... It just has all the draw cards, and you just no. you just try to get planetary uprising on the field and just claim it to a built oblivion. No, just like just make it so they can't. You have so much health they can't kill you. Yeah, and, and you like, just claim, claim, claim. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> no, no, but that's I, I feel like that one. I think it's really awesome that we're less than probably less than a month out from the next set. And we're getting, we're still having decks show up. We've got that one show up. We it's have, amazing the the creativity in this game. The yeah between the character pairings and like the deck construction, and it's it's only going to get better each set that comes out. Yeah, it's just, it's super cool. So no, I hadn't heard about that deck. Um, e even though the 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 most optimal character pairings for competitive play um, might not change a whole lot. Or, or there not might not be a lot of diversity in that. There's going to be more diversity in the deck building and the card choices that you choose to put in your deck. Yeah, when the like pool e gets like bigger, even can... even now I've seen uh, n like new Poe Maz builds with uh, hyperspace jump and retreat um, that may maybe forego planetary uprising even. And, oh, that's uh... just dumb. <laughs> that's just you don't play, they play that card. But uh, so back to, on the the Poe Maz, I pulled the. Fast Hands, because clearly Fast Hands is bad now. It's unplayably bad, because they eroded it. That doesn't... You know, it's not like I didn't... No, that was the, the joke. Cause I, I didn't even right. bother testing whether it's still good. <laughs> it's just clear they eroded it. It's unplayably bad. No, um, I replaced that spot. I kept the same list that I have. Uh, replaced that spot with one cheat and one retreat. One to, cheat. Interesting. One cheat. I, I, the theory What was the cheat head, for? To pull back hit and run? Yeah, to get another hit. To get a third hit and run. But... Man... Which yeah, I'm not th super that could be with. that could be really helpful because I have seen an issue with uh, not having fast hands fast hands Poe now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just too easy to remove his dice, and if Moz doesn't hit focus, you just remove the other one. And yeah, that happened to know. me a lot in the top four. Yeah. Moz didn't hit focus like several times. So, but, so I I was under the impression that the the errata wouldn't hurt it a lot, but I think it did hurt. Like no, nah, I don't. I don't, I, don't th I think it's it's slowed down. It's not 
as I said earlier, it's it's no longer irresponsible to play something else, but right. it's still really really good. Um, I think after discussion with Rob yesterday at the store champs, I th- I'm going to test. What I'm going to test is, is I'm going to put one fast hands back in because I think it's good, but I don't know that I want the second one, and I don't really need. I guess I do need it early, but. But regardless, I'm going to put one fast hand in it, and I'm going to try one. It's a trap. Because I want to be able... I think I, I have this... I'm salivating over the scenario where my opponent is playing emo kids, and yeah. they roll a special, and I'm like, all right, I'll get both of my Poe specials before you do anything. Yeah, I played a Poe Ray in Awakenings. Like, that was my only deck, like, pretty much, that I played. And um, I had one It's a Trap in there, and it was just for the, the Vader Raider matchup because I felt like that was, like, my hardest matchup um just because i mean vader's vader <laughs> and uh yeah. poe doesn't like to discard cards and uh but i would have it in there so that if they get the the holocron on the tuscan i can it's trap off the holocron special and oh, right. you know blow them up but yeah because doing doing eight damage with, with poe that quickly is is pretty awesome or more if you have the the thermal detonator well okay or, spread across um, all of them yeah that's that's pretty good um, so do you see the format changing much uh, when Empire at War comes out? I see, know, I know. Actually, uh, before we were, I was making notes about what we want to talk about, I wanted to ask you that, because I saw somebody, the whole thrust of Empire at War, the main thrust of Empire at War, is to get people using vehicles and supports and making that more of a thing. But I don't see that, actually, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Yeah, I don't like know. If, if I can upgrade Bowcaster to deal six damage with Poe, like it's he's just he's gonna get faster, so you're not gonna have that much time. Yeah, I think uh, Hera really might be the only Hera and maybe Plutz pilots are still are only, are gonna be the only good vehicle decks. I I think they're still gonna be too slow. Um, for the meta, I think mm-hmm. Nines is gonna stick around, and uh, Phasma. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't see the the whole supports thing having a big impact just because they are so expensive unless you have uh, characters like Unkar and Thrawn, you know, generating tons of resources. Well, there are also a bunch of cards in the new set that give you more resources faster. That's true. We have like new things like appraise and recycle. Um, You've got the the red one from the red villain one that is if it's the first action of the turn, just oh, right, get one yeah. for free. Um, I th- I mean, I'm sure it'll add more but, more variety. If but you play I, a vehicle deck, you're not gonna, you're not, ra- rarely gonna have the first action of the turn. Exactly. So, hmm. I don't know. It'll, it'll, it'll be definitely interesting to see. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, I, d- I know I don't think that uh, Vader's Tie Fighter is gonna be that good, honestly. Boy, you, when you read it though. <laughs> And your eyes get this big thinking about doing what like six damage to somebody for two. Yeah, resources. but it's six damage for two resources. I know it's magical can... Christmas land, but I mean that's that's one damage for three resources or, or three damage for one resource. Like you can do that with but you get to do a lot of other die. different dice. Yeah, you get to combine all those dice into one. That's true. So it's important. No, I'm not saying it's going to be good. In magical Christmas land, it's going to blow people out, and somebody is going to somebody's going to have seven damage on Vader and kill him in one shot with with Vader's on Tie Fighter. So. Um, but I don't know if that's good enough for competitive play. So I, th- I that's one of the things that I think this set is going to do. It's going to f- delineate further between whether you're playing this game at your kitchen table to have fun, and you want to move all the bits and pieces and roll the dice and then untap and then do the, and like just have a good time playing the game, versus cutthroat, you know, travel to Nova or Gen Con and try to win a bunch of money or something. I think uh, hero vehicle decks are going to be really crazy because. Because you have C-3PO and Y-Wing? You have C-3PO. <laughs> yeah, Y-Wing, I really I really like the Y-Wing. But, no, you have Reckless Reentry and Strategic Planning and uh, and Recycle and Hera. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, we'll have to figure it out. So we're, we're going to get started on our round three, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. All right, we got our players shuffling up here. Uh, it's going to be Von Cramp versus Todd. Uh, Von again running his Eora Nines, and Todd running Emo Kids. Emo Kids. 
So how do you see this match going? Vaughn didn't really have a great showing in his yeah, first match. I don't, I, don't see this last, I don't see this one lasting very long. You've got a aura and nines. Are, they are not as many dice. They're powerful dice, but they're also powerful dice on the other side of the table. And it's just... There's a reason the one on the right wins store championships and the one on the left is one that people go, hey, I want to try that deck sometime. Yeah, one of the, the big drawbacks about the, the Aura 9s deck is that you want to be discarding your cards it's for true. Aura Sing, yep. but you also want to be overriding your upgrades on 9s. Yeah, it works across So purposes. you're playing with you know, maybe a, a 4 card hand every turn? Maybe less? Yeah. What? Well, if every card in your hand is a one that gets you an extra resource from Aura Sing. And that, that, that that's one that is one of the strengths of it is that you can use Aura Sing to help ramp into those three cost weapons on nines, uh, because you can discard on her resource side and get the two resources. Alright, here we go. We've got a two card three three card mulligan on the right. And three card mulligan on the no oh, four. Four cards. Aura nines wants something very different. So if you're Jason, who do you go for first? Probably. Or Vaughn, who, who do you go for first? Yeah, same guy. For those that don't know, Vaughn is Jason's, Jason is Vaughn's name, real name. Um, I think you go after Vader. I think it's almost always correct to go after Vader in this matchup. Um... You can get those big dice off the table, and then you're still dealing with the the lots of dice on Kylo, but they're just not very strong. Kylo's dice by itself, especially... Well, he does have a bunch of guns. But he also has a lot of two guns. So it looks like Todd uh, won the battlefield roll, and he's choosing his. We're on Emperor's Throne Room. That could be really painful uh, mm -hmm. in this matchup. So you disarm, huh? We got a fast hand, a disarm. It's going um, to be really important for uh, Vaughn to play his turns quickly so that he can claim that Emperor's Throne Room. And it might be a good idea if he gets a if he's able to get a rocket launcher on nines to to leave it there to do it uh, so that he can claim the special over. So he gets over. something. So it's not just a defensive claim. He actually would get something out of it. Exactly. So Vader comes in double blanks. That is not what you want to see. And Holdout well, Blaster comes an in then with like, a pay side, and you don't want to see that either. <laughs> fast That's hands fast on Aura, hands. turn one. Uh, this was something that he didn't. Uh, he didn't get this again. He didn't get this in in the earlier game. He didn't get his fast hands early, which could have, which probably hurt him a little bit. So it's a, it's an interesting play to put the Vibro Knife on Vader, since most people are going to go after Vader. I'm surprised he put it there. That is interesting. I don't know that I agree with it, but. Um, maybe he's, maybe he runs lightsabers and he's trying to get him to go for Vader so that he can maybe over he override just likes it. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know. All right, so that's a uh, Kylo special coming in and it's a three damage. I'm sure he's got a couple three costs in his hand. I see that at least yep, one. I oh, one. when he hits it, man, Todd's Kylo is just, just, just yeah. ripping people apart. It's like that rocket launcher earlier, which apparently I can't get over a rocket launcher rolling that well. It was pretty, it was pretty, I don't normally pretty crazy roll to watch. them, I just go do four. So, uh, Vaughn is discarding Disarm. Oh, so he I knows. I know about that one. You have the Disarm, and you have a Disarm. So, Todd knows that Vaughn has a flamethrower in his hand, so he can easily. Oh, I'm sure we're going to see it pitched here. Yep. Yep, there it is. Pitch to reroll. Doesn't want to take that three damage from the Kylo special again. Which, even though Kylo Special doesn't do the damage now, it has still gotten rid of the the flamethrower. Exactly. So he will not be seeing it next round. And man, his aura seeing dice there is not cooperating. Alright, three damage to... Man, Nines, nines is going to be at nine health at the end of this turn. I mean, he could... Let's see if he, if he tries to claim and use the... Which is not... Allowed. I mean, actually, say speak that all the way through. Okay, so he didn't. Um, 
Yeah, Google's. we talked about this last week where uh, the Emperor's Throne Room uh, states that you have to be able to turn one of your dice to a side showing special to right. resolve it. You have to, it has to be on, you have to move it to a different side. That is the special. Right. Woo! This game is going down fast. Although, Vader has six damage on him. That was another fast hands. And a backup muscle. I didn't see the right hand side. I didn't either, but. Well, he's getting he, after it. He doesn't need to play anything. He just wants to roll invader. Alright, so. And he, that is uh, threatening to kill. He has two damage showing. Yep. It will take him two actions to resolve it, so he will be have a chance to roll in nines and maybe resolve that holdout blaster before it redeploys. What do you think you would do here? Uh, would you go ahead and roll in nines and try to get the most value out of the holdout yeah, blaster? I think I well. He, I mean, he has removal in hand, but. Which apparently he's playing. Oh, and that feels bad. Uh, Grant and I talked about it last week about, about how we we don't really like one quarter portion as a card. It, feel, it just feels bad giving your opponent a resource. Yeah, I, I like to, especially to remove a one like that. That's that feels bad. Oh, especially when that happens. That's rough. And that's an that's interesting always, in, yep. include. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he, he flipped it to the three for one side, but he only needed two damage. Uh, so that's uh, probably just a That's Darth Vader. He's error. very angry. <laughs> he needs to hit something hard. He needs to overkill. Well, that's a that's a hero card. He can't overkill. God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um... So back of muscle coming down. But back of muscle's coming down. I, I don't. I don't. Other... I don't think the back of muscle is gonna bring enough muscle to help help with this game here. Uh, well, if you get a good roll out of R. Singh with this, he's about to play the second uh, fast hands, I believe. Another interesting include. It looks like Vaughn has a arms deal. In his yeah, hand. yeah. I saw that. I mean, you're already discarding for aura and overriding on nine, so you're gonna have you're gonna be playing with very few cards like. You're you're gonna be almost foregoing any sort of dice removal or mitigation. I feel like with cards like that, wow, in an or a sing deck especially. Oh, there's a Kylo special showing, so he is figuring out if he wants to discard or play. So he plays. So he plays zero. another fast hands. This he, I probably would. I, I, in that moment, I probably would have backup muscled, so that you keep the zero in your hand for the Kylo special. Yeah, that that might have been a good play. I mean. It depends on. Oh, that's and a zero. He hits a zero. I, guess, I guess the rest of his hand is almost nothing anyway. So he still hit a zero. So, even though Vader's only at half health, he could just get blown up by a uh, Aura mm -hmm. Singh activation here. A solid Aura. He's got two cards left in hand, so a solid or a very good Aura Singh roll is going to knock him down. And he, he, ha two, he has he hands. has a fifty percent chance to hit damage on her dice, so. It is very possible we see Vader go down and a naked Kylo against Oris. He got her too. He pitches both cards. Vader's dead. Yep. He got guns on both of them. Pitch both cards. Resolve both yellows. Nothing Todd can do. Let's see if he sees it. Yeah. And he saw it. Vader dies, and it left the it stranded the one damage out there. Wow! Sad this times. game turned around quick. Yep. It and is now a Kylo has nothing on him. It is now a twelve health or a sing. Plus no, a no, thirteen muscle. health plus a black backup muscle against a naked. So I guess Kylo. backup muscle makes him a nine health guy. Exactly. Right. Man, this is. I can't believe the game swung like so fast like that. that was but a great but that's one of the that's one of the things about Destiny is that sometimes, uh, you know, with the, with the dice involved and. Um, you know, random card draw, games can swing like that in an instant. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Todd did not get his holocron or anything to play, so... And it, it's unfortunate he's not going to be able to mitigate anything that Vaughn brings in with or with the double fast hands. Both, both of his best yep. dice are going to get resolved instantly. He, uh, he, he really needs like a Force Illusion or uh, so he plays I mean for, Force Illusion is the only thing I can think of that, that would that's going to be able to save him he needs some insane hits with Kylo's special and the most he's going to be able to get is 3 
at a time. I believe. I, 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 Take a I'm, shield. Unless Vaughn runs uh, Slave 1, which I have seen some aura decks do, just because she can make a lot of money quickly. Right. So the... If you ever watch poker on ESPN, they keep the updated odds, and you'll see on one turn of a card, you can see those odds flip drastically from one person to the other. It's, that's exactly what happened here, is the odds are now significantly more in Jason's favor. Oh! Especially when all of the dice he's rolling are 50% or greater to hit damage. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, if I was the Kylo player, or if I was Todd, I might just concede right here. Because... And he chooses not to use his other fast hands. Interesting. That's strange. Maybe he forgot about it. Hmm. So we get... I mean, I don't think I'll need it. <laughs> damages, 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 damages. Yeah, and Aura Singh is another one of those characters that you do not want to doubt her dice because they can... Yeah, they're, they're just super good. So he's so Todd yeah. is now dead on table. He's got six damage on him. Well, no, he's not dead eight. on table. He's got, he's got eight. He's got two up there on the backup muscle. So he needs to get... Jason needs to get one more damage on the next turn out of... I don't even know if there is a win condition for Todd. Well, he hit a three. But you don't discard it. Y you really just need Vaughn to... Um, you discarded the vibro knucklers to the Kylo special. Yeah, and that, w that was uh, something we talked about last week, too. Uh, Grant discarded a card from a Kylo special that was done against him. And it doesn't actually discard the card. It returns back to your hand. Um, some people mix that up with Uncar's effect, where the card end up ends up getting discarded. If Kylo made you discard, then his special would be great. Oh, definitely. I, th I think he'd see probably a lot more play. Alright, final round. Most likely. Of course, it would be it would be terrible for Jason, but it would be pretty cool to see on camera just blank after blank after blank after blank. Yeah, that's, that's all that needs to happen. He's, he just needs to roll all blanks. All blanks, all the time. And Todd needs to, like, holocron in... A well, mind probe or something. To five cards something. instead of six as well. Who does? Todd. He just put one back on top. Oh. Not great. Alright, let's see what we got. So he's at eight. I mean, y'all can y'all can see how how crazy fast hands can be on a character like Aura Singh. Mm -hmm. And uh, just think back to when uh, Poe was able to do that. <laughs> and it looks like Todd's just giving up I don't know if he sees it that he can just fast hands the oh and there there it goes there it goes it's gonna put him at 10 and Todd is back to selling his cards <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks for joining us for that match guys uh, we're gonna get uh, Vaughn in here to discuss a little bit about his deck um, and see you in a couple minutes. All right, I'm here with Jason, and uh, we just got to see your uh, Aura <laughs> Nine deck take down the the yeah. emo kids. That that match went a lot better than the last one. A lot better, man. Not getting the uh, fast hands during my first game really really hurt. Yeah, definitely. We we could see that with because he got off what two best defenses. Yeah. On Aura's dice. Yeah, that was that's not just, cool. Yeah, that's painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. So. Yeah, I mean, the game was pretty much sealed up like as soon as you got your second fast hands. and uh, I felt it, bad it, about it, putting it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking at, like, you know, you saw me, like, kind of pause for a minute. And I'm like, man, do I really want it? Because that's just insult to injury. I mean, it, it looked like Todd was in uh, control of the game with Vader half dead and Nines was already gone. Yeah. But as soon as that rocket launcher got upgraded <laughs> and the second fast hands came yeah. down, I was like... Oh, Vader's gonna Vader's gonna die. Yeah, like, I knew instantly. I knew somehow and there's nothing he can do. Somehow I was gonna roll some range. Somehow I was like, I'm rolling range. It's gonna happen. So. I mean, I mean, Orsing has 50 percent chance to yeah to roll damage. So yeah, and then not only if you notice later, I, I pulled another rocket launcher. I just was one resource shy, but I was like, oh really? How, how cold would it be just to drop <laughs> another rocket launcher? You know, with with another 66 percent chance. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, but yeah, it, it, it turned around. I didn't think it was going to, but it, it did. You know. So it was cool. 
you know, finally something went my way. So have you played this uh, Aura 9 stick uh, quite uh, a bit? Or? This is my first time. First time ever. Okay. Yeah, I don't like that it relies on Aura a lot. I mean, FN kind of does this thing, but usually it's just junk, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, were, we were talking about how um, the Aura 9 deck is a little uh, non-synergistic because... Right. You're you're discarding your cards for aura, and you're also like trying to override weapons. Yes. And you, you pretty much never have cards for rerolls in that deck. Yeah, that's the problem I run into. And that was when you saw me also with the fast hands. I was like, well, if I put it down and then I roll crap, what am I gonna do? You know, I don't exactly. have anything for uh, reroll. So, you know, I just took the chance. But yeah, yeah, definitely run low on cards. So, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. You know. So, what has been your favorite deck of uh, the Spirit of Rebellion? Uh, my favorite format. deck favorite deck um you know i have to say vader guard yeah me too because you know um i kind of get lost in the action sometimes and vader's pretty straightforward well actually han snap is my favorite we talked about that <laughs> one last week but you play a lot of weird stuff though. <laughs> but i do like uh i do like vader guard and yeah. uh yeah vader guard actually won uh, the tts like store championship yesterday which no was kidding. like 88 people from all over the wow. world wow no, I didn't know Pretty that. Crazy. That's nuts, man. But uh, yeah, I love Vader Guard. It's just straightforward and easy, you know. Definitely, yeah. So, just roll yeah. out Vader, four throw strike Vader, Vader. Yeah, a lot of melee. Four speed Vader. Yeah. Vibra so, knife. Yeah, man. Just straight up. I, I'm hoping this next set will kind of help Vader along some more too. Because I was talking to to Grant earlier that um, uh, I was looking through some of the the new cards, and I I think it'd be really fun to make a Vader Elite Vader. Sienna Ray deck, so that you can use uh, leadership to it's reactivate crazy you're saying Vader. Because I was talking to Todd, I was like, I need to do blue yellow, villain. You know, and well, that, it, well she's, she's she's red. Oh, she's red. Okay, because re- right. leadership is red. Yeah. Well, anyways, I want to do a blue yellow. I really do, and I don't know why. I just. But you don't like the Tuscan Raider? No. No. I think, I think that's dead, man. With uh, when they when they change fast hands, I don't I don't know I don't like it anymore. So. So what do, what do you want to do? Like the Guavian? <laughs> No, I want something with this new set. I'm hoping something will help, you know. But I, I want to be able to include like some thermal detonators with Vader. You thermal know? detonators, yeah. With Vader, interesting. Yeah. Just get extra well, damage like, just in. for Ace in the hole. Just yeah, man. <laughs> but some heavy damage, you know. So I'm getting greedy, but you know, it just be fun. Big melee, big damage, you know. That's what I'm looking at. So. So with uh, FFG saying that they're or, like pushing all these uh, new support cards, uh, right? Do you think that Heavy, heavy support and vehicle decks are going to be competitive. Yes, definitely. Um, Vader's tie, I think, is going to be pretty crazy. However, uh, rocket launcher man kind of takes care of that. So, going to see a lot of rocket launchers, you know. Yeah, I think uh, rocket launcher's value is definitely going to go up. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think it jumped up a little bit already, didn't it? I haven't checked the chance cube, but on eBay, it seems like it's gone up. So, I don't know if you've looked or not. I I haven't because okay. I already have two. Yeah, so. you already have two. I only have four. <laughs> I'm still hurting for a couple more, you know. Yeah. So, hopefully I'll get I'm, some. I'm one of those players that I, I just like to have... Like the minimum list, too? Like the minimum yeah. play set. Well, you know, if you notice, I'm always looking for my dice, you know, and I usually <laughs> oh, bring yeah. the wrong dice. Yeah. So, that that's a problem, you know. It's, it's a burden having so many dice. <laughs> I have to live with it and, you know, a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, man, <laughs> I mean, I guess when you have, like... Like four, six, four, like six vibro knives. You yeah, know, and like losing one is just like eh, oh yeah. Well, well <laughs> I lose stuff in my couch, as you've heard. You know, it right. ate one of my dice. It was a Vader die, and I was asking on the internet if anybody had seen it. It was in the couch the whole time. You, you play Star Wars Destiny on your couch? Yeah, with my dog. Yeah, I'm teaching oh, okay. my dog. He's gonna be the first ever dog. To what's play. your dog's What's your dog's name? Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, he's named after uh, my best friend, and he hates his middle name, which is Leroy. So as a reminder, I named my dog Leroy, oh, and it's funny because my dog's really sweet. jacked up looking, like he's he's kind of mangled, but uh, you know, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he's a cool dog though. He's cool. So yeah, he's gonna be the first uh, competitive dog uh, Destiny player. So be looking for him. That'll be exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the we, hardest part is getting to roll the dice. Maybe, maybe we can get him on stream sometime. Oh, because yeah. they don't have thumbs, right? Right, so right. It's hard to pick him up. Yeah, I'm working on some kind of adhesive type thing, but it releases as he throws his paw. You know, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> anyways. So, how do you feel uh, you've done it? What's your record today? Um, is it two and one? I don't know how many games I play. I don't even remember. So you're two, two, two and one. Yeah, I think, I I think you all played three games. Yeah. Now, three, yeah. I don't. This was yeah. this was round three. Okay. Yeah. Two and one. Do I have to play anybody else? Are we done? Uh, I think we're gonna have one more round. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Wow. So wait, wait, one, two, three. Yeah, play three. So, uh, did you play in the store championship yesterday? Yes, it did, and I did horrible. What did you end up taking? I don't even know, dude. It was it was way down there. It was, it was like it was bad. No, I mean like what deck did you bring? Oh, what deck? Okay, um, I did FN and and Junior Vader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Emo Vader, and I did horrible. It was bad. Just nine's not rolling well. And... Man, I think it was just bad matchups, honestly. I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, you know, it's bad matchup. Things didn't go well. It was, honestly, it was bad matchups. Like, everything I played, it was just the wrong deck to be playing against at that time. Like, I played Luke Ray, and he dropped um, a Force Speed and a Vibro, like, first turn. Oh, yeah. And then rolled out Luke, you know, as his action, and That's five painful. damage right away. Right away. And I was just like, yeah, this is not a good matchup for me, and... It's just like one action after another. He just kept piling on the damage, and it just went so quick. It was, it was horrible. I had a miserable yeah. time. I yeah. mean, there, there's really not much you can do against like some of the ray decks that just action cheat turn yeah. after turn. And you know, and FN's you know. so slow, man. And it, it, if they roll good, you know. Yeah. FN FN just rolls so slow too. Just one weapon at a time, you know, and you just keep overriding. It's just real slow, methodical. And if you're rolling bad, then there's just nothing you can do, you know. And I think Luke Ray is a really touch matchup, tough matchup for that deck. But um, you know, I learned my lesson. <laughs> so Ty Jennings says uh, he's pretty sure that that's the the plot to the next Airbud movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'd watch it. I'd, I'd definitely go see it. I'd be there on opening night, man. I would too. I mean, I consume like all Destiny content. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, man. So. Well, thanks for joining us, and yeah. uh, we're gonna see if we can get some more games out for you guys. All right, we are back. I'm here with uh, Grant again, and we're going to be watching Vaughn and Trey go at it. We're seeing uh, Eeyore Nines again, and they're going to be playing Palpatine. And this is actually my Palpatine deck. It's not Trey's, so um, he might... You're going to see the better version. The better version? Yeah, that was... Or the better pilot? That was a jab at Trey. No, that's oh, not... oh. <laughs> Yeah, I do like my, my Palpatine version quite a bit. Um, it... It really tries to uh, cheat Palpatine into his three damage side so that you can get five damage out of him. Um, I mean, he's really at a disadvantage to a lot of the other characters, like, uh, or, well, and just character pairings in general, because you have things like Ray that cheat turn after turn, and uh, Nines that cheat turn after turn, and Palpatine doesn't cheat. He just rolls his dice, and if they get removed, then that's bad for him. Um, or did, did you leave Swiftness in, or did you put it in for like, take it out for Abandon I removed Swiftness for Abandon All Hope because they do a similar thing in that my opponent can't use removal. Um, or at least non-zero cost removal. So, um, yeah, I switched it for the Swiftness. Every other card in the deck feels like it belongs. I do miss the swiftness a little bit because you could do cool plays where you could swiftness into removal, into force lightning to remove another die, but it's uh, it, it's a little too cute. I mean, it, it helps with the consistency sometimes when you don't draw your force speed early, because force speed is really there to like help you cheat into your uh, three damage with aim or use the force. But yeah, I I've had a lot of fun playing Palpatine these past few weeks. Uh, I was just bored and. Uh, wanted to play him a little bit. So the, our p- players are doing their roll-off right now. Trey's got a 2 and 2 Vaughn's 3. And uh, if you're if you're Vaughn, like, whose battlefield do you choose? Uh, I think i take his. Whose? Uh, Trey's. I think you take Trey's battlefield just for the shields. And so don't worry about the cargo hold? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, shields, shields are pretty big against uh, Palpatine. I just think that with all the cheating you're going to do with nines, most of the time you're not going to have dice to be removed from it. Exactly. And uh, Palpatine, the the only thing that you could run in Palpatine that like gets around shields is Intimidate, and I don't see many Palpatine decks running that. Uh, I had it in there as a one-of, but... Um, you basically just use it as discard or fodder almost every time, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's, it's just really situational... It's good in, like, certain matchups, like uh, Qui-Gon Ray, um, it's really good in, or uh, even Bay's Ray, with, where they're running, like, Caution and... Uh, Diggins. And Duggins, exactly. 
I just think it's one of those things that doesn't really fit the meta right now with all the Vibro Knights running out there, so people don't value shields very highly. So they just don't end up taking them. Most of the time, you're going to end up re-rolling the, sh the shield dice. Which is interesting, because I still run, like, two to four shield cards in my most of my decks, and they're pretty effective. So it looks like Trey's got a deflect in his hand, and I think he's deciding if he wants to get rid of the... Oh no, he's deciding to fast hand... Because he rolled an aura, and he's deciding to fast hand instead of link it up with the modifier. Yep. Which is a good decision, most likely. Yeah, I feel like anytime you're gonna get just damage out of the way without it being mitigated, you should just do it. You know, if you get greedy right there when he's got five cards in his hand and resources showing, a lot of the time you're gonna see that dice go away. Rob says that he values shields when playing Snap Solo. And uh Yeah, I think that's why it's one of the more underrated decks, is because it tanks up with tons and tons of shields and it can, you know. It can make you work to get your damage through them. I'd never seen anybody run that deck until last weekend, and I must say it was disgusting. I was not a fan. Looks like Trey's going to isolation the resource. So which, do you bother, which, do which you bother is, is, is a decent move, because I mean that resource could turn into two resources, which means Nines is going to get... A big weapon next turn, but if Palpatine claims, which he hasn't even rolled out yet, he is playing very conservatively with removing two dice. Maybe he's just wanting... Oh man, and we got three damage and a focus. Oh my goodness. Ten nope. potential. There's the potential of ten damage from Palpatine dice this turn. That is painful. No resources showing on Von Cramp's side, so he's just going to take it to the face. Yeah, unless he, uh... Oh, and he just claims. Yeah. He just claims. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, we have... 7 health left on 9s. Four, uh, 11 health, health left. Turn 1. Turn 1. That's the power of Palp, though. I mean, if you don't remove his dice, he's going to eat you alive. Yeah, definitely, and uh, man, he, he can have some explosive turns like that where the opponent either spends the resources at the start of the turn in anticipation that he's not going to roll that well, and uh, then they're just at the mercy of your rolls. Yeah, well, I'm not really sure how much mitigation most of the other Nines decks are playing. I mean, you know, you want all those weapons, so you're running probably a 16 weapon suite, so then you draw a hand, I mean, odds are you're going to have at least three weapons in your hand at any time. And then the rest of your 14 cards, maybe half of them are like economy cards, like Enrage or Logistics or right. Imperial War Machine, and then... So then so, you're just left to just try to outpace them, basically. So the Flamethrower came in and did uh, two damage to Palpatine, and then Aura Singh rolls in and gets another three, so, I mean, that's... That's a quick three damage. That's pretty scary. Oh my, oh my gosh. His Palpatine is just... All he wants to do is roll damage. I think Vaughn has to... He doesn't like you here. I don't know if it's going to help him, though. I don't know either. He will keep both of his characters alive. That's just a two, so... We'll be able to spread it enough if he wants to. And that's the thing about Palpatine is, like, sometimes you get down to where... Both characters are within, you know, a couple damage, and all you have to do is resolve one die, and their entire team is dead. Yeah. Does Trey have anything to use on that holocron? Uh, no, I don't believe so. He has uh, an enrage, a feel your anger, abandon all hope, and an aim. It okay. looks like. Well, one so. thing's for sure: this match will be over quickly. Unless Vaughn gets. Four damage out of that rock, uh, flamethrower right now. I don't know if it's gonna help. So something interesting here: Trey enrages to take a resource. If he pitches his hand, he could potentially draw into a rise again and get that off and heal five damage. Which means I really don't think that Vaughn can come back from that. Yeah, that would basically be the nail in the coffin. 
So do you think it'd be worth it to pitch a card to try to get that four damage? I think you have to. Um, you're so far back against the wall. If Palpatine resolves two more dice, well, he he has to resolve more than two, unless they're damage dice. So, but with the four speed and the aim in hand, it's gonna be so easy for Vaughn's entire team to just die instantly. True. Because that's all he needs is five damage. No, he needs six. He needs six total, so it will take him more than one Palpatine res resolution. Bait and switched. Into a disrupt. Interesting. Interesting play. Hmm. He must be fearing the rise again. He must know he's going for it. So Trey claims. Uh, takes another damage. Let's see if he pitches his whole hand anyway. He may yeah, decide I mean, to I keep mean, the aim. No, he he decides to keep what he has. He likes it. He does get the rise again. He might drop the abandon all hope here. Love you too, Rob. <laughs> Looks like Vaughn's holding a vibro knife. And he does drop the abandon all hope. Try to oh. limit Vaughn from playing an additional weapon this turn Smart. I have a feeling that and also not, not be able to pay for the uh, the 4 damage on the flamethrower or the 2 damage on 9's but I don't know he's not out yet because Vaughn could still roll an aura and get 6 damage which puts Trey at 1 left he does have Trey does have the overconfidence in hand, but that's not going to help if Vaughn fast hands his one die. Well, Trey also has a Z6 and a Vibro Knife sitting in his hand. So if he gets damage off now and then combos into both those weapons. Oh, that's true. So he could override ride the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why he chose to get rid of the resources. So instead of playing the Feel Your Anger now, Trey just decides to roll in. I mean, he only needs to resolve a couple dice, so why not? And that shield will help a lot, actually. The shield on Palpatine. Because there is no Viber Knife in play yet. His shield side is so good. Getting two sh getting two shields and dealing two damage is gross. So, did I... Did, what did Jason do? I'm not sure. He just discarded his Viber Knife and got a resource. So Trey takes the three shields, and that, that four speed is rolled pretty well. I mean, it hasn't rolled a special, but it's rolled focus, it's rolled shield when he's needed it to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with Palp, you don't really need the action cheating when you're he's rolling that hot. I mean, you can't ask for much better dice than that. Three, three, two. Oh, exactly, and uh, most, most decks aren't running any multiple die removal, um, like dodge, so. That's true. Here comes the Z6 Riot Baton. Which is which is something that's interesting. I wonder if in the future, um, when resources get a little bit more easy to generate with things like, or characters like Thrawn um, and Unkar, if we'll see dodge and block come back. Oh, I definitely think so. I think that the meta will shift again one way or the other, and you'll see them make their way back. Because the argument for it is that they're just too expensive, but... Um, I mean, you can have some serious blowout turns uh, where you just remove, you know, 5 to 10 damage. Yeah, and basically it's just shut down an entire player's turn or As round. And especially with the uh, the the way they're pushing supports and how much slower it's going to be to roll out all those dice. And like, like, you could get into a point where you have, you know, you're re-rolling, like, 10 dice on the board and... And I think it slowing down will help generating the resources as well, not just cards coming out. Oh, uh oh, look, we got a bump on the camera, so we'll get that reset. You know, sometimes you don't want to take the resources just because you feel you have to get damage out as fast as possible. But with the supports coming into play and everything slowing down, it'll be easier to take those. 
I mean, you can just see, like, the power of Palpatine. Like, all he has is a Force Speed and a Holocron. And he has done 17 damage. <laughs> With, like, almost no rerolls. <laughs> yeah, he's still sitting on the aim that he drew two rounds ago. <laughs> Insane. So, or Singh hits a Disrupt, which could be pretty relevant here if he decides to discard to make it two. Yep. Really fearing that rise again wisely. So, I mean, still no four speed special, but that's game if he just resolves two resources from the Palpatine dice. And he, surely he has something for the Holocron by now. Nope, he's got two aims. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see if Vaughn has removal. Nope, I guess not. So I'm just going to try to go for a more of victory here and get some more damage on Palpatine. Three damage. Let's see if he's got any more weapons. Well, all Trey has to do is take the resources in this game. Oh, that's right. No ambush on it. Because that's four damage. Yep. It, it doesn't matter how how Vaughn decides to split it up. No, nope. because he can't he can't put the extra two on Aura. <laughs> That's it, and that should be game. Let's see if they realize. Oh, Trey's got it though. Yeah, they. And there it is. Well, man, that was a pretty one-sided match. <laughs> Palp did dirty, dirty things to poor little FN. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty brutal to watch. <laughs> it's, I like seeing Palp do well, though. I mean, I wish he had a place in the meadow right now, but. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know really why he doesn't, because we don't have a lot of people running Crime Lord decks in our meta. I think it's just due to the fact that he doesn't have a lot of removal. You know, I mean, mono villain bl removal is... Mono blue villain, specifically, doesn't have a lot of just straight-up, you know, multiple dice removals, except for fill your anger. Yeah. You know, he's obviously going to get isolations open to him, which is excellent still. And that's another that's another one of the things about my deck, is that I, I run the... I run a holocron package, but I just run uh, two force push and two force lightnings. And you can get into really interesting situations where you have a force speed special and a force push special so you're able to force push two dice four speed while you're resolving specials to take another action feel your anger and then do something oh, yeah. else if you still need to so that's really good yeah I actually had uh, in, in the game I played last week uh, I had a four speed a force push and a force lightning and all three of them rolled specials oh. one turn <laughs> But both of my pal dice rolled damage, and I had enough to win the game right there. So, I re but I really wanted to like just do it, just to chain do it. like a bunch <laughs> of actions together. I would have been, oh man, that would have been so much yeah. fun. But so I don't know. Do you think that Von Von made any kind of misplays there, or do you think it was just pal rolling? I, I think fat? I think it was just uh, poor draws. Probably like he didn't get his removal uh, early enough. Do you know if he runs? He doesn't or uh, best defenses. In that deck, um, I that don't. Eats Palpatine. I don't know if we saw them uh, from him in any any of the games. He didn't play them. In my I wouldn't game. be surprised though, because uh, that deck really wants Aura to stay alive as long as possible. True. So I wouldn't. I can't. I'm trying to think back if we've seen them. Earlier, we were talking about characters that might get better pairings. I think Aura is one to look out for moving forward. I think that her capabilities right now. Are, already are strong. You know, she's got low health, but her damage output is up there with basically every other and character. Her, her value actually increases with the fast hands errata. I mean Oh yeah. She's one of the only like good characters you can put it on. True. Her her and Han are probably the the two best you can put it on. Yeah. We I talked a little about it a little bit earlier that, that Rob Rob thinks that Maz is one of the best characters for fast <laughs> hands. <laughs> So that you can uh, fast hands one of her dice and then resolve two others, but which is interesting. I mean, you basically have to play a character without any manipulation, being, having to be worried about. So, well, it's it's good for sure. But I mean, fast hands and three damage from uh, aura every round is gross. Jeez, <laughs> we get it, Rob. You love her. <laughs> 
or do you think that how strong do you think Pomaz is going to be moving forward? Oh, it, I mean, it just it gets strong. Like Poe gets stronger with every single upgrade that comes out, especially the ones that have AOE damage, and he already has access to a lot. Um, I don't I don't see it going away at all. Trey and I were talking earlier, and he was talking about playing the cannon. And then just discarding the cannon, tapping Maz, and doing six damage for free. Like, well, you can't because uh, I believe the cannon has to be in play for you to to do the card effect. Hmm. Because because be post special lets you resolve one of the sides of the die. It doesn't That's let true, you. It resolving. doesn't let you use uh, the card text unless it unless you're resolving a special side. That's true. I guess it doesn't actually activate the card. It's just one side on that card. Exactly. So, okay. I, I mean, it's it's still pretty flexible uh, in a Pomoz deck. Um, but a lot of people believe that uh, the Po Errata to vehicles only is incoming. Oh, really? They still think that that's going to happen? I think in future sets it's probably going to happen. Uh, I was really surprised when it didn't happen when they did the Fast Hands. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people were... Rob's saying he wants to see uh, Unkar TIE Fighters, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I ran uh, Unkar with two TIE Pilots at the last couple store championships, but um, I actually don't have it put together right now, so... Uh, People demand it. You messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only have the, the Palpatine, pretty much. But Alright, guys. Uh, we're going to see if we can get y'all uh, maybe one more match, and uh, we'll see you soon. Sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so we got uh, Todd rolling in Vader. He gets a special, a one shield, and a one range. You guys missed the greatest commentary that's ever been had on any <laughs> game ever. Yeah, we had the most in-depth conversation about uh, <laughs> the ins and outs of Destiny, and it was... Uh, I'm sorry you guys missed it. <laughs> we solved all the problems with the game. Yep. Rocket all the Launcher. Rocket Launcher coming down on nines, but he doesn't have any money to pay for it. I imagine he's sitting on a uh, Imperial War Machine in hand. Yep. And yep, he is. How did he? So, uh. yeah, he didn't have an ambush action to be able to resolve that, or to be able to play the Imperial War Machine. Yeah. It, it should have. It should have gone back to Todd and been Technical Todd's action, display. and the, the Rocket Launcher should have stayed in the pool. But. Looks like both players just missed it. We'll see so, if that ends up mattering. So three damage going into Aura. She's now She's got one, one away from death. Left. And there's a gun on. There's a range showing on. On a uh, Vader, Aura could be done for. I believe Aura is done for, folks. I'm not gonna get so four damage I wonder why this. he's leave, deciding to leave that aura die in the pool. Why doesn't he just resolve it? Because he could put two more damage into Vader. Yep, and then he could have gotten the Vibronocles roll the next round, and that would have killed Vader. So Vader will. Vader's probably going be down dead. this turn anyway. Yeah. Do, so. Do you start focusing Kylo now and just end Vader with the backup muscle next turn? Because you could just move a backup muscle. Yeah. I, I guess it doesn't um, really make a difference. Just if, depends if, on what if, you roll. If nines and the knucklers just rolls a one damage. Yeah, if you're not if you're doing one damage from one versus the other, you're going to get one in with the backup muscle this turn anyway. Right. So. Vibronucler's coming in, hits the two damage, and Vader's dead. He so gone. We got a nines with... So this is kind of in a similar spot to where we were last game. Yep. Um, Kylo with nothing on him. Just a different character. Um, but you, then you have nines. And I don't know that nines has what it takes against a... Oh, he's or or I, I don't think Kylo has what it takes. No, Kylo's dice are just too bad. E exactly. And man, Vaughn's rolls with nines are just have just been so well. good. Here, take a damage. 
He still hasn't even rolled in nines yet. Yeah, nines are still sitting there waiting to go. I believe his hand is empty, though, but um, the reroll from that riot baton will get, add a lot of consistency. Mm hmm. And two damage again. His riot baton is loaded. Doing some work. Carlos already at six. This is going to go quickly. So Carlos effectively at four because of the backup muscle. Four health, four damage left to do. Let's see what we got. We got a fast hands is useless. There's a, a rocket launcher in there. We've only got two resources. I think it makes sense just to overwrite the the Z6 and that you can't. Um, yeah, I would probably I would probably overwrite it with the rocket launcher. Get something. Because if he hits that four damage, then all he needs is the backup muscle for the game. Mm-hmm. And he hits a uh, three, three, it looks like. Nine to two. So, he's got to get two damage out of nines. Or he's got to get one damage out of nines. So, man, this uh, this or nines deck really turned it around after that first game. Yeah. That first game, it seemed like... It's pretty brutal. He didn't he didn't really do a whole lot, like, but... It seems like the key to this deck is the fast hands. Getting the fast hands lets you resolve the or dice without getting them controlled. I think so. I think that's a big part of it. Being able to, to cheat in for two and three damage turn after turn mm -hmm. is very impactful. And he, he he was actually getting you down pretty low in your Palpatine yeah. match. Yeah. He did some damage. He did quite a bit of damage. I mean, you, you were still... I mean, you, your, your rolls were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I started off with some seriously hot dice. I did. But then I was sitting on aim the whole time. So high ground this matters. away the a one rocket launcher. One. I mean, he could claim, and but that would still only get him down to half health. Huh? If uh, Todd, damage, Todd, cla if Todd claims muscle. here. Oh yeah, that's right. You're right. That's over. It's blow up, backup muscle, or lose. And game. Well, that was exciting. Was frenetic, I believe, is a better term for it. Ah. Yeah, so kick back watching some. Destiny. It, was, it was good to see uh, see Vaughn come back and like win a couple games after that just brutal. Um, that first match was not fun yeah. for him, but after that he's come back. He won three of them, so yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Good, good for him. Definitely. <sighs> So where do you see uh, the meta going with uh, Gen Con? I know we just got, we talked about the, the TTS uh, store championship that went on uh, yesterday. Do you think the, the percentages of decks is going to be si similar uh, for Gen probably. Con and Nationals? I would probably look at the, the top 16 of what happened in the TTS thing yesterday and go off. Of, that would probably become my gauntlet. Um, keep an just, eye out just for... Just the top 16? Just the top 16. I mean, other, otherwise you're... Looking at I was decks. I was really surprised there weren't more front car decks. Cause yeah, I, I don't know what's happened to that one. Has it gotten worse or have other decks just gotten better? I don't know because uh, is the nines ball. Up? I mean, there's not nine any. There's better? no. There's almost no way to play around salvage stand, and every deck wants resources to play events and play yeah. upgrades. So I don't know. Maybe know. there was one in the top sixteen. I think that was it. There was one. I I was expecting there to be at eight. least two or three. No, nah, that was. Yeah, Vader Guards, Pomaz, Emo Kids. Was there a Palpatine in the top 16? There was one Palpatine in the top 16, but it wasn't... It was like... It lost in the first round immediately. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know how, how uh, competitively viable Palpatine is, but um, it's the deck that I've been having the most fun with recently just because I wanted to try to make him work. I When Spirit of Rebellion first came out, I didn't think he was that good because I, I never had trouble playing against him. And I, I played a couple games with him, and with, like, the stock list, uh -huh. um, you know, like, normal Holocron Suite and, like, just removal and rise again, and it it wasn't enough. So I I decided to go back to it. Now that we're in the, uh, we're at the end of, like, store championship season, I decided to go back to it and see if I could uh, put together a build that work. And this, this one that um, y'all saw Trey Pilot on screen earlier has uh, been doing pretty well for me. 
it was pretty good. If I, it had, I had a, my I saw, you never hit a four speed special to aim. <laughs> no, I didn't. I hit the focus. <laughs> but you didn't need to. I didn't you, need to. I rolled all it. three yeah. guns. That was pretty awesome. And it, but if I hadn't rolled, then my hand was full of cards that would have gotten me to the three, the three damage side. So, did you see any, uh, any, any anything in the deck that um, you thought was that needed to be changed or you didn't agree with? I, I'd have to play it more. Uh, I, when I played with Palpatine, I tried aim. And the switch went uh, used the forces much much better, but you have aim, you have used the force and aim in there, and that seems like a lot. So, yeah, you can definitely get whatever you want, or even use the force defensively if you need yeah, to. Yeah, that's so. That's been, I, which is really helpful if you can, uh, if you have a force speed special and they already have a blank on the board, you can force speed use the force into another blank and then feel your anger off multiple dice. Cool. So, yeah. So it was fun. I yeah. enjoyed it. It's better than sitting down to Poe Mouse again. Yeah. That game would have been fast. Yeah, I I don't think that... I really do. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean even even the Palpatine game was pretty fast. That was pretty fast. But, well, I don't know, about five turns, four turns, five turns, something like that. I think it was only three. Was it? You dealt, like, no, no, no. I did, I rolled 14 a, a, damage turns. I, did, I, I, did, I had <laughs> the, the three in the focus, one. and then I had the three and the three that he controlled, and then I had the one that I took three, so it went four. I had the one that I so, took three okay, shields, yeah, and right. then I had right. the last one where I took... It, it did slow down, yeah. Yeah, it slowed down the, at the end the, once he the started first, getting some stuff in. The first turn was just so explosive. Um, it seemed so quick. I was doing happy dances. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, be sure to check out the stream. Uh, we're going to be streaming each week on Sunday at mm -hmm. uh, 2 p.m. Uh, is normally when we're going to start. Uh, today we had uh, uh, a player that was supposed to arrive, but he was running a little late, and then I think he decided that he ended up just not even coming. So... Um, hopefully we can get some more uh, variety on stream for you guys uh, just to kind of spice it up um, and uh, additionally uh, Etten Games and Hobbies uh, they have Friday Night Magic Standard uh, streaming on the same channel Fridays at 7.15 and Saturdays at 6.30 yeah come and join us here uh, continue to join us on Sundays at 2 o'clock uh, We'll see you guys then.